And let's join for our uh, call to worship from the uh, liturgies from Lent. On this second Sunday of Lent, we hear Jesus teaching about the suffering and rejection he would endure on his way to the cross. But Jesus does not hold back. He tells us that to become his followers, we need to deny ourselves and take up our cross. May God help us as we learn more of what it means to be Christ and followers of Jesus. Our first hymn is number 803 in the dark blue books or on the screen. Come, ye thankful people, come. Let's stand and sing together. for the, the end of our lives, but we also pray it for right now. Come and by your Holy Spirit, bring us to our true home together in your presence. Remind us of our true family, your church, your, your people that you've called to be with you, to belong to you. Remind us, Lord, as we sing and pray. Remind us as we read your word who we really are in you. Because you have given us a new life, a new birth, a new identity in Christ. Lord, by this identity, by this transforming power, make us your holy people and help us to worship. Because you, God, are good. All the time, you are good. And Lord, your goodness forces us to look at ourselves, to look inward, 
and we realize that we need to say sorry. You were gracious to us in our sin when we didn't deserve it, and we often fail to share that same grace with each other. You, Lord, have been kind, and we have failed to be kind. You, Lord, are generous, and we have held ourselves back in fear. You, Lord, are holy, and we are not, and we are sorry. But still, you call us home. You call us to be who we truly are in Jesus. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, and may your, forgive us, may your forgiveness make us new in Jesus Christ. In him and by your Spirit, set us free to live our lives in love. This we pray in Jesus' name. And now together we share the prayer that he taught, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hear the good news. By the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have been given a new birth into a living hope. Receive this gift and know God's peace. Amen. As a sign that we are forgiven and made one family, please now turn to your neighbor and share the words, the peace of Christ be with you. Now the uh, Emmanuel singers are going to share the song, Spirit of God, Unseen as the Wind.
And would the uh, children please come forward? Our scripture reading this morning comes from the uh, the gospel according to John chapter 3. Jesus has just uh, cleared the temple uh, in a very dramatic way. And uh, then we we join in the story here in chapter 3. Let's listen for God speaking to us here and now, but first let's pray. Come Holy Spirit and open our ears and our hearts to your word. Spirit, change us and make us new by your word and help me to preach it with faithfulness, truth, and love. In Jesus' name, amen. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, You cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back in his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going. So you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, you are a respected Jewish teacher and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like you to picture the biggest um, transition you've ever had in your life. What's the biggest change uh, that you've ever experienced? Can everyone get something? It's major life transitions like you know, moving to a new town, uh, going from being single to getting married, uh, going from not having kids to having a little baby to take care of. Um, When someone that you love dies or moves away, our lives are full of moments where there's a before and after. Interestingly, in our society, we still count the years as uh, a before and after, right? Uh, This is 2024. How come? Right? It's since Jesus. It's been 2,024 years. Um, There's, we mark history with a before and an after. Um, I've started joking around when I can't remember how long something was ago, I blame COVID because, oh, that's a few years BC um, before COVID. I don't know, it's messed with my sense of time. But all of us have these moments that are click, now life is different. But the biggest one of those, the biggest one of those everyone here has gone through, none of us remember. And that's the moment when we were born. For nine months, we were growing and even learning 
in a world that is completely different from the one you were about to enter. Your eyes didn't do anything in the darkness. The, the sound that you heard most clearly was your mother's heartbeat going thudump, thudump, thudump. Uh, cool little fact I learned, babies are born crying with a very slight accent because they've been listening to their mom. It's not much, but they can tell the difference between a baby that's been listening to Chinese and German and Hindi uh, just by the way they cry. We're there, we're aware, we don't have words. And then all of a sudden we're born. And all of a sudden, instead of getting all of our oxygen and nutrients through a tube in our belly button, we have to go <gasps> for the first time and then, you know, really loudly cry. None of us have been through as big a change as that for the rest of our lives since. On a little side note, I think we'll go through one more change in our life just as big that we can't tell anyone about afterwards, right? And that's when we die. Those moments are actually quite similar in some ways. But being born is the biggest transition any of us make. And that's what Jesus is talking about in this story of him and this respected teacher named Nicodemus. Now, Nicodemus is a guy who knows his stuff. He is an expert on God as much as any human being can be an expert on God. He knows his scripture incredibly well. He's a teacher of it. Um, he's a Pharisee, which if you're familiar with the gospel stories, usually they're the bad guys arguing against Jesus. That hasn't happened yet, right? Nicodemus comes to Jesus after he does something pretty dramatic that gets a lot of people upset and says, I've seen what you've done and I know that you're genuinely from God. He's announcing to Jesus what he's heard and observed because of Jesus' behavior. So Nicodemus is approaching Jesus from the human point of view that makes sense. The Bible says that he came at night, he came after dark to see Jesus. It's not entirely clear why. The most common theory is that he wants to say to Jesus, I want to know more, I want to listen to you, but he's not ready to make that public. Right? Have you ever been really interested in something, but then you don't want people to find out? Right? I, I remember in high school, you had to be careful with what you thought was cool and what you admitted what was cool, or people would make fun of you. Um, maybe you went to a nicer high school than I did. <laughs> but Nicodemus is coming to Jesus because of his reputation among people, but he doesn't want everyone to know because of the reputation it might give him as a, as a respected teacher. And Jesus does something he does all the time and give a response that seems like it's out of left field and then makes sense later. Right? Nicodemus just says, I can tell you're from God. And Jesus says, if you want a glimpse at the kingdom of heaven, you have to be born again. And Nicodemus is like, what? How did that make sense? You know, I can tell you're from God. And Jesus immediately starts talking about the kingdom. Because Jesus doesn't just want a good human reputation. He doesn't want to be popular, either with the crowds or with the experts. Those are human values. And Jesus is here to proclaim a whole new way of being. The kingdom of God is the thing that's talked about most uh, by Jesus. People often think it's something like love. Love is way down there compared with the kingdom of God is like. What, it is, what it, is it like when God is in charge? What is it like when God rules compared with 
what it's like when we try to take charge. Jesus' whole ministry is going to be declaring the kingdom and inviting people into the kingdom. And here at the start, when Nicodemus gives him his first, like, compliment, hey, you're a good teacher. Well done on that sermon. Uh -huh. Jesus goes, no. If you want a glimpse of the kingdom of heaven, you have to be born again. And Nicodemus takes him completely literally and says, I'm too big for that. <laughs> I'm too big. My mom would find it extremely uncomfortable. There's an interesting little translation issue here. Because the Greek word that John uses, anothein, does mean again. But anothein means also from above. <laughs> so you can actually translate it either way. Jesus said to Nicodemus, to see the kingdom of heaven, you have to be born again. Or to see the kingdom of heaven, you have to be born from above. Which of those sounds correct? I think it's intentional that it's unclear in the way it's written. That's not a mistake. And it's not like there's one English trend. It doesn't work in English, right? Again and from above aren't the same word. But I think it's an intentional thing that John is doing as he writes this story. Jesus said, you have to be born again from above. And Nicodemus took it totally in a human point of view. We're born once, man. It's the biggest change we ever go through, but then we become adults. And once you're a grown-up, things are set, kind of. Right? Whose personality has radically changed here in the last year? Who feels like they're a totally different person than, than a couple years ago? Right? We do change, but once we get settled, we don't think that anything big is going to happen. And we don't really want anything big to happen. <laughs> right? if, if someone came along right now and said, I could make your life way, way better, but you'd have to change X, Y, and Z about yourself, how many of you would jump at that right away? And how many of you would be kind of suspicious? <laughs> yeah. But Jesus says, if you want to see, much less enter the kingdom of heaven, you have to go through birth again. And he's not talking literally. He's not talking humanly. And he explains that. No, no, no. I'm talking about being born of water. And he's already pointing to what we do in baptism. I'm talking about being born of water again and born, more importantly, of the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God needs to come and make you new for you to be part of the kingdom. And Nicodemus, totally fairly, <laughs> is confused. First you said I have to be born again. Now you're talking about being born of the Spirit, kind of from above. I don't get it. And I think we can stop there and say, can we find that okay? There's a big part of me, and I don't think I'm alone in this, that thinks if I'm smart enough and work hard enough, I can fix everything. <clears throat> that if I'm smart enough and strong enough, I can change my own life by my own will. And then, even worse, if I'm smart enough and uh, work hard enough, I can fix you. <clears throat> or them, you know, someone worse than you, obviously. Isn't that just the most foolish thing you've ever heard? And who, who here has done that or thought that way themselves? I don't think I'm alone. 
I can fix myself, I can fix you, I can fix this situation, whatever it is, from my human work. I can claw my way as a grown-up into the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus says, no, you have to be born again of the Holy Spirit. And whose work is that? You remember, you know the classic uh, teenage line, you know, the, the mom says, you know, I gave birth to you, you have to listen to me. And the, the teenage stereotype line is, I never asked. Yeah. It's true. Moms here, how many of you found your baby really helpful when you were giving birth? Anyone? No? Right. Whose work was it, moms? <laughs> Yours. You were the one giving birth. You had, and the baby just went through it. When we are transformed by God's Holy Spirit, who's doing the work? I never asked to be born. I, never, I didn't help with the process. But with the Holy Spirit, I actually think we can ask. We can ask to be born again. It's not that we can do the work. It's not that we can make ourselves be born again. But unlike our human birth, uh, according to the flesh, uh, this translation says, in a human way, we can ask for God to make us new. It's a huge change. And, and I do think in our settled Christian ways, we don't want to acknowledge what a big change it is to truly follow Jesus. And I don't think it's a change we make once. It's not a click, I was out and now I'm in and everything's good. Right? Does anyone here think they've got it all figured out already? That they've got this whole following Jesus thing mastered? How many people here need a new transformation in their life? I'm going to say with all the authority I have, it's all of us. All of us need to be born of the Spirit every day. But that first moment where we accept it does matter. And it might not make sense to the world around us. You know, what difference does it make to be a Christian? We can immediately jump into um, the way the world values things. Well, I've got, I've got people I can trust. Oh, or here's all the good that we can do in the world around us. Those are fantastic reasons to be a Christian. They're not the reasons to be a Christian. Right? We are called into something new and spiritual. A new relationship with God, a new existence. Just like you used to get all your nutrients and air through right here. Now you breathe through your nose and mouth. Who we are comes from God, not this world. It's a change as big as being born. And it's hard to understand as describing airplanes to a fetus would be. <laughs> or let's go simpler. Try to describe to an eight and a half month baby uh, what the color blue looks like. Anyone want to give that a try? They, they don't have a frame of reference. They don't have eyes that have ever seen any color. They don't have ears and a brain that has ever processed a language. Hey, kiddo. <laughs> they have to be born in order to know what you're talking about. We need to be transformed by God to understand God. 
And a big part of this, the hardest part of this, is it means if we're born of the Holy Spirit, if we're born from above, if we're born again, who's really in control of our lives? I have my own goals, my own desires, my own ambitions. Some are good, some are medium, some are bad, but they're mine. But whose life is this, really? Whose goals am I going to have to live out over the next day, week, decade? Whose goals really rule my lifetime? Who does your life belong to? If we're born of God's Holy Spirit, and the Spirit moves where the Spirit wills, and you can't necessarily understand it from the outside, then our goals, our aims, our purpose becomes God's goals and aims and purpose. Let's today ask to be born. Maybe for the first time in your life, maybe for the thousandth, Let's ask God to give us a genuinely new transformation, a genuinely new appreciation and guidance in the Holy Spirit. Because God's kingdom of heaven is at hand, and by the Holy Spirit, he has invited us, adopted us, given birth to us into a new life in him. Amen. We now have a chance to give thanks to God through what we offer. Let's uh, stand and sing a blessing as we present our offerings to God. Brother, sister, let me serve you. <laughs>
Let's pray. By your grace, Lord Jesus, you made yourself our servant. You came to earth not as a mighty conqueror, but in kindness and love. You came down from heaven to bring heaven here in the middle of our brokenness. And you are with us still, offering that kingdom now. For your grace and love and peace, we give you thanks. And Lord, you do give so many earthly gifts to us. You give us gifts of joy and happiness together for families and friends, uh, for people that delight us. We thank you for times of plenty and joy, for good food to eat, for warm houses to live in, for all the, the gifts of plenty that are around us. We thank you, God. And Lord, we pray that you will give us eyes to see the gifts of heaven in these earthly things. And Lord, for your spiritual gifts of grace and peace and truth, we thank you as well. And we pray that by your Holy Spirit, you will point us away from the things of this earth and towards your call. Lord, our world needs earthly gifts. We thank you for food, and there are many who are hungry. We thank you for family and friends, and there are many who are lonely. We thank you for gifts of health, and many are sick and need your healing. Lord God, we pray for others, we pray for ourselves, we pray for your world in need of these earthly gifts. And we know that, that no amount of human work will satisfy because we need your Holy Spirit. May your Holy Spirit move in us and move in this world to increase love and kindness, to increase grace and peace all around us. Lord, there are many situations in our world on the news, in our own neighborhoods, in our own families, with our dearest friends that need your help. We ask, Lord, that you will be present in power with the people we love. We name them to you in silence. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust you with all things, with our very being. Send us out in power now, in your Holy Spirit, and in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 211, Take Up Your Cross. Let's stand and sing once more.
now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen.